Welcome to the Shamrock Green Room, your favorite podcast highlighting everything about SCOTA Central Catholic and Columbus Catholic Schools. Each episode, we discuss what it's like to be a Shamrock. Whether that's a current student, a teacher, an alum or supporter, we want to hear your stories on why this is such a special place in education. I'm your host and producer, Taylor Dahl, Communications Director for Columbus Catholic Schools, and today I'm joined by 2020 SCOTUS graduate, Bria Lossick. Bria, how are you? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Lossick is a graduate from Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, majoring in journalism and sports media. Bria, great to see you. It's been a while and taking the time out of your summer schedule to come sit with us today. Yeah, no problem. I mean, it's just kind of weird to be back. We were talking about before that I, I don't even remember the last time I was here, so it's pretty exciting to be back. For sure. Yeah, not much has changed within the building, but, you know, there's a few little things here and there, different things in classrooms and whatnot. So we'll kind of just dive in right away. What was your childhood like? Were you born and raised here in Columbus? And just kind of talk about that and where you attended elementary. Yeah, so I was born in Columbus. Both my parents were too. So um, I grew up going to St. Bonds right across the street. I mean, walking over to lunch every day to SCOTUS. So kind of been around SCOTUS for as long as I can remember. Uh, around the same people pretty much our class was really small I think one of the smallest that St. Bonds and SCOTUS in general had Um, and so we were really really close and just growing up with that really tight-knit group was really cool for sure yeah I think I think you guys graduated with 40 and that's definitely on the smaller end and in the recent I mean decades for sure so kind of odd that that small of a group but just the way it goes sometimes yeah, I mean, St. Isidore's, I think, they had the smallest, and they had 10 that came out of sixth grade into junior high, so they, I mean, they were, like, really a, a tight group coming in, so all of us, yeah, graduating with 40 was still pretty small. What are some of your favorite memories from elementary school? I'm trying to think. I mean, that seems like so long ago, which is crazy, because, like, five years ago, or four or five years ago, when I graduated from SCOTUS, seems like so long ago now. Yeah. Um, I would just say every day being around those people, like I mentioned, I mean, I came back for Chloe Odbert's wedding just about a week ago, and I was there with her, obviously, uh, being a bridesmaid with her, and then Amber Buman was also a bridesmaid, and, um, and just seeing all of our classmates that went not only to St. Bonds, but then to SCOTUS was just, like, so cool because, I mean, as much as things change, they really do stay the same, and... I don't it's really just the people that really made the place. So everybody loves a favorite recess story. That's what we can all relate to with elementary school. If, could you name one, kind of talk about one? I was thinking about this. Um, I think it's really funny because when it was like too cold out or like raining or whatever and we had to have inside recess, you had to be a little bit more creative. And I was thinking back to an elementary school when Chloe Odbert Eric Mustard and I would play like iCarly at recess and we would pretend to be the characters. And I was reflecting on that and being like, wow, I wanted to be on camera when I was little. And I like didn't even connect the dots until I was thinking about it just now. Um, But yeah, I was Carly, Chloe was Sam, and then Eric was Freddy with the camera. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, So I know you've been a huge sports fan since you were a kid. What are some of those early memories watching sports or attending sports? Like, what's that first memory that you can come, that core memory you can come back to? My dad says that my first College World Series was in 2005 with the Huskers. I don't really remember that. I was like three or four. Um, But I would say either just going to the College World Series every year with my dad and, and my mom. And then also the Big Ten tournament once that came to Omaha, too. I mean, my dad and I would get like the tournament pass and we would be there all day every day like the only ones in the sun all day I mean the Huskers would play their game and it would be full and then everyone would go away but like we were still there sitting in the stands so I think that those very long days of just taking in baseball even when I didn't really know those teams that's that's really what stands out so going to the CWS you know everybody kind of adopts a team when the Huskers aren't there did you have a team that you kind of adopted like as it for like to be a fan of as a kid When I was a kid, I I can't really think of any, um, but I remember in 2016, I was like, I I mean, everyone was because Coastal was like the the fan favorite, but I just remember I like really latched onto them, like even in the regionals and the super regionals. And then I was there for the championship game. And so that was really cool. Yeah. For me, it was always, I started following college baseball kind of when the Huskers went in 05, I was there when they lost Arizona State. And then um, just kind of went a few years 
after that too, but my mine kind of was always Tulane. I just mm-hmm. always thought like the Green Wave, such a cool mascot and cool logo and stuff. So it was always like everyone kind of adopts a team, you know. And I feel like LSU is obviously a very popular team in Omaha and Oregon State's been too. So it's it's kind of it's just a different dynamic of a sporting event. Really kind of I mean March Madness is kind of the same, but with with it being here in Omaha, I think it just means a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. And especially, like, I remember going to Rosenblatt, too. And I was at the last game that was ever played at Rosenblatt. And so, I, I don't know. I, I love now Charles Schwab, formerly TD Ameritrade. I mean, who knows how many names it will right. go through. But yeah. Rosenblatt is just, like, always going to have a place in my heart, I think. For sure, yeah. Did you play sports as a kid growing up? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, any SCOTUS kid, like, no matter if you're a sports kid or if you you know you're in the band or, or whatever, like you just grow up doing so many different activities um, because all of your friends are. Uh, I remember in in high school, I think Mr. Aduka would always say like 97% of kids are in at least one activity or something like that. Um, and so yeah, I grew up playing um, mostly club soccer. I played basketball, um, ran track in high school for a little bit. Um, kind of did like a lot of different stuff. My main one was cross country when I was in high school. I started that in junior high, um, because I wasn't very good at volleyball. Everyone seventh grade comes in. I mean, obviously SCOTUS has such a great volleyball tradition. So that's kind of the first thing that you're brought into when you're a junior high girl. Uh, so I just wanted to be around my friends. Um, but after seventh grade, I <laughs> realized that was not what I was meant to do at all. Um, uh, and Liza Zaruba and Sam Tonagis were both going out for cross country. I didn't really know what it was, to be honest. Um, but they both had siblings that were in it. And I was like, all right, I'll join you guys. Uh, so we did that our eighth grade year and then all four years of high school. That's awesome. What? So kind of talking about um, the Shamrocks a little bit, what's your first memory of watching a Shamrock sporting event? So my sister went to SCOTUS. She's um, – nine years ahead of me so pretty big age gap but I mean I remember going to SCOTUS games when I was really young and then I also had a cousin uh, that was the same year as her so my cousin was a cheerleader and um, I remember one football game she like let me come out to the on the track with them and like cheer right next to her I don't remember how little I was but I, I mean I was definitely like kindergarten first grade maybe um and so that was like really really cool and then i mean i i ended up cheering at scotus so it, it's kind of cool to remember that for sure yeah kind of that first impression um do you do you remember your first day at scotus and kind of what that was like you know the transition here from elementary to high school it is a big jump you know it is big different because all the, you know you, you come together with some of those you know kids in your class you've never met before like, do you, do you kind of remember those first couple of weeks of what that was like? I do. I honestly remember more like the orientation day where you first come in and like your buddy teaches you how to do your locker combination and like you set up your locker and it's like so scary because you're like going through your class schedule and you're like, how can I make it from this class to this class. And I only have three, four, four yeah, minutes. Yeah, four minutes. I'm like, uh, I remember I was so anxious about it. But I actually, I remember my uh, my shepherd. Is, is it still the shepherd's program mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I remember my shepherd. Her name was um, Jamie Beauvais. And I remember, she, like, I thought she was the coolest person ever. I think she was a senior at the time. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what she's doing right now, but by any chance if you're listening to this um I do I do remember you as my shepherd in seventh grade and I thought you were like the coolest person ever um but yeah I remember she sent me like a candy cane when on um for the NHS candy cane things oh yep they still do a, that. Yeah, a candy gram. She sent me one, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, does that mean I'm cool now? Like, <laughs> I just remember, like, she was the nicest person ever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just remember being super nervous, but I remember really being glad that I had her. What would you say are some of your first, like, memories from junior high? Obviously, sports were kind of impacting that, but anything else, like teachers or classroom things? Yeah, I think – what comes to mind first are like the bus rides in junior high because oh, yeah. you're always going to like I remember like riding to I don't know Madison comes to mind or like 
Twin River, like whoever you're playing in like junior high basketball or volleyball. And we had so much fun on those. I, I feel so bad for the bus drivers, like the coaches in the front, because we were going crazy in the back. Cause, and again, like I really was not good at volleyball. I really didn't like playing volleyball at all. So like the bus rides were my time. <laughs> I was sure. like, okay, I, I actually enjoy being in this activity. So yeah. I think that's what comes to mind. That's awesome. Uh, so going through St. Bonds and then coming to SCOTUS, how early did you, did you feel the impact of Catholic education, would you say? I think that, I mean, it was always pretty present. Uh, both my parents are Catholic and then obviously um, attended Catholic school all my life. Um, but I think the first time that I really, like, went from it maybe, like, religion being just, like, a class to, like, something that I actually wanted to implement in my own life as, like, a, a faith aspect uh, would be in junior high. I remember... Um, like the the spiritual director at the time Brenna Prem she was only here for like one or two years or something like that um but she was there when I was in in junior high and I remember she used to have this lounge like on the third floor and she would just invite us all during study hall or any dead time that we had like you could just come hang out and it like we didn't necessarily like talk about faith or anything we were just hanging out with each other but then we got to know her and like felt more comfortable and then she invited a bunch of us junior high kids onto the rock retreat, um, which is kind of like a mini JC camp almost when okay. you're in junior high. I don't know if they still do it, but that was like the first time that I really was like, okay, like this is uh, something that I, that I want to have in my life. What was the biggest transition for you going from junior high to high school? Ooh. I mean... Honestly, it was really helpful that I did the same activity in cross country from like eighth grade to freshman year because it really didn't feel that different because when you're training in junior high, you're training with the high schoolers too. You just have like different workouts, but you're still around everyone. So it's very different from like being separate in your junior high sports to um, like varsity sports. So I think that really helped, but definitely actually like having that competition count more and like then you're competing for state championships and like yeah. running at state, I think was, was very, very nerve wracking. The first, I would say freshman, sophomore year, uh, I, I had a lot of nerves. And That's kind of what I was leading to yeah. next is like, you were a part of state championship cross country team your freshman year, went undefeated. What was that like? Like, so I didn't know you didn't do it in seventh grade. So it's like you do it for eighth grade, whatever, kind of feeling it out. And then next year, bam, you're state champion as a freshman. And Liza and Sam, right? You yep. guys were on the team together. Like that had been a pretty cool moment for you guys. Yeah. I remember when we were in eighth grade, Mr. Lom started kind of like preparing us a little bit of like he could see that our class coming up. Potential. Was, yeah. Had a lot of potential. I think he was really excited about it. Um but, yeah, I mean, transitioning from junior high to high school in, in that freshman year, like, honestly, it just kind of felt like we were, like, flying the entire year because we didn't lose. And, like, I didn't really know how rare that was of not – like, I mean, when you when you compete at meets, there's, like, eight, nine, whatever, how, however many teams that you're going against every single time. And the fact that not one team beat us throughout the whole season, I, I didn't realize how – cool that was my freshman year because it was just like okay this is the way it is like we're really good okay we're um we have a good chance of of making state winning state and that was just also the tradition of SCOTUS cross country was yeah. you make state every year it was not really a it was not really negotiable like that's just kind of the standard that was set and then it was like okay are you gonna win um so I think that was always like my mindset throughout of just it really felt like we were flying like I really yeah. didn't think too much about anything other than the end goal sure yeah and it is when you think about it it's like to accomplish that as a freshman like it's super exciting and rewarding but then it's like well do we have to do it again you know what I mean yeah. or like do we like are we expected to do that again because it's hard I mean winning every meet that's not easy to do you know so it's it's pretty cool that you guys were able to accomplish that and to have so many young runners on the team like that's that's really awesome too that you guys were able to experience that yeah and I mean to the point of like how so many people at SCOTUS do a lot of different activities too some of my best friends that year both did cross country and cheer 
So we would be on a Friday night at one of our meets in Albion, and then us four, five, six cheer and cross country girls would all be doing our makeup and eating in the car back to Columbus to cheer at the football game. And it, I mean, you, I, I look back at that. And I'm like, that was probably like my favorite part of high school was, and that's part of that. Like, Oh, I just felt like I was flying. Like sure. I was literally going from place to yeah. place with the same people. Like yeah. it just really felt like a whirlwind the whole time. Yeah. What was it like being on the cheerleading team all four years of high school? I, I loved it. I mean, I've been dancing since I was in kindergarten, so I've always really liked performing. And then cheer for me, I mean, I was never really that good at dance. I just kind of did it for fun. Um, but when I found, like, cheer, that was kind of my thing that I really enjoyed, along with cross country. Um, and, again, just with a lot of my best friends. And I think that early, my freshman year, we, we won state too. So winning state in both cross country and cheer my freshman year. And then, I mean, you talk about, like, how hard it is to repeat that. Yeah. Um, so I think that also my freshman year, that standard was kind of set um, in my mind and also, like, in our teams' minds. Um, and so then it was just, like, it really helped me as a person to, like, I don't know, looking back, not to get, like, super nostalgic or anything, but, like, I don't know, when you have that standard and then you do fail. Like, we didn't win state again in either of those activities of mine, and that was always my goal every year, and I was, like, so set on it, and, like, so were all the girls that were with me, and we didn't do it again, and I I think I learned more from that of, like, getting back up and you put in all the work, and at the end of the day, it's still okay. Yeah, it's good to have high expectations. I feel like this place does a really good job of teaching kids – to have high expectations and everything. Do you have a favorite cheer moment? Oh, gosh. I'm trying to think. I mean, I got to cheer at a lot of, like, state games. But I think my favorite memories are definitely when we competed ourselves at state and those practices. I think my senior year at state was the most special just because we choreographed both routines um, starting in the summer and it was like us five seniors that were really good friends and would spend so much time together choreographing and just like trying to figure out how to make the entire squad better. Um, and to see that routine, like go onto the mat and just watching it back and like knowing that we couldn't really do anything else. I think that that was probably the most special part of cheer for sure. Uh, so, so we'll kind of keep going back in time here. What teacher do you remember that like had difficult assignments? You're like, I really don't want to do this, but you enjoyed working with them. Like it was fun to work with them, but it was just like, you knew you had to put in the time and the work. So two come to mind because I mean, like I went into journalism. I was always like a reading, writing student. Um, math and science were both not what I really wanted to do. Yeah, and right right there with you. Yeah, yep. it just, I don't know. Some, I, sometimes math is kind of like soothing because you do equations and you know there's a right answer. So once you get into the rhythm of it, but I had to know how to get into the rhythm of it and like know how to do it. And I kind of struggled with math a little bit. And I would say Mr. Salyard's assignments, I feel like that's probably not a shocking answer. But I I loved working with Mr. Salyard. Like, his humor that he had in class was so funny because it was, like, so unexpected. You didn't really know, like, it's not like he was, like, an overtly funny out there guy who just, like, would kind of slip in a joke and it would just make the whole class erupt. So I, I I think Mr. Salyard and then I would say Mrs. Dussel, too, Again, chemistry was not my strong suit. I still have nightmares about, like, titration, and I made it too pink. I'm sorry, Kate Smith. You still (laughs) hold that against me. I ruined our titration. Um, But Mrs. Dussel held us to such a high standard, but at the same time, she was, I think, the teacher that I remember that gave us the most grace, and, like, it really felt like a real-world application because she'd be like, I just want you to communicate. Like, if you can't get this assignment done – you can take the quiz later. You just have to communicate it from the start. And I don't know. When you're in school, I mean, that's not really an expectation a lot or, or kind of what teachers allow, which fair enough. Um, but I think that her giving grace to us every day and knowing that we had so much going on and we were all so stressed. Sure. And I, I don't know. I'll, I'll always remember how she was just always giving us grace. 
What are some everyday moments that outsiders, like kids who didn't go here, they wouldn't see every day that you liked about SCOTUS or high school? Yeah, starting starting in prayer every day before class, I mean, you don't really realize it does kind of like center you a little bit. Um, and then I think, too, just going back to how every single person knows everyone, just being in the halls and like not being able to turn a corner or anything without saying hi to someone or like getting in a conversation and um I mean Northwestern's not that big necessarily it's like 8,000 undergrad and I know UNL is like 25,000 so I mean not that big of a college but definitely still where you walk on the street and you can go 20 minutes without seeing someone you know so I think that just being able to be around everyone and always I don't, always just being like comfortable around everyone. Yeah. I would roll out of bed and just like not, I mean, I would like brush my hair and, you know, jump out the door and like race to class pretty much because you have to wake up so early. But like, I didn't care what I looked like because I had been around all of these people since kindergarten. Like sure. they, they knew me, like I was comfortable around them. I didn't really need to put on like a front or a face or anything. Yeah. When you went to Northwestern and kind of talked about your high school experiences to others, were students, like, shocked? Or, like, were they – or did you have some friends who had similar experiences? First off, like, whenever I would say I'm from Nebraska, everyone was like, you're the first person I've ever met from Nebraska. Like, what? And then, yeah, I would say, like, oh, how how big is your class? And they'd be like, oh, I had a a 1,000 kids or I had 300. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I had 40. What? (laughs) Like, it just – it seems so unreal. But, I mean – Again, the way that I would describe it is just, like, I wouldn't really want to have a different size or, like, I I really liked that small environment where I didn't have to, like, try too hard to, I don't know. Like, everyone just knows everyone. Sure. And it's just so, it's so comforting. Yeah. Yeah, I always think about that when I went to UNL. Same thing, I graduated 21 kids. And it's, like, I would talk to friends from Omaha or, like, friends from Kansas City and same thing. They'd be, like, you graduated with 21 kids. You, you got to know everybody, and that's just I, – I mean, I wouldn't really have it any other way. Mm-hmm. I couldn't – and I wonder if, like, people from the – then they're probably the same boat. They probably wouldn't have it any other way, but I wonder if, like, they really think, like, oh, that might have been – that kind of would have been nice to literally be able to know everybody and their parents and their siblings, yep. you know, because that's what it's like here. What were some of your favorite memories from your senior year at SCOTUS? I would say – I mean, again, just, like – Obviously, I mean, you think of, like, my senior year, 2020, and you always go back to, like, how it was shortened and everything. But I think that the things that I did get to put kind of, like, a cap or a bow on were some of my favorites, like, cross-country cheer. Um, I got to do state cheer um, and wrap up, like, that season um, and then run at state my senior year. So I think that those two things were really good. But then also just, like, how – sentimental everyone got in March of 2020 yeah. into May and everything where it was like obviously no one wanted that at all mm-hmm. but it was really cool to see how much this place and like how much our class and community really meant to each other because it was just everyone was telling each other you yeah. know because it was just like this this time that you didn't know what was happening yep. and it was just so emotional that you couldn't help but kind of tell everyone like how much you meant to each other so I think that that was just really cool and seeing how all of our teachers really supported us like there was not a teacher that didn't want to set up a zoom and just like Mm -hmm. talk to us about random things yeah so that was really cool yeah you kind of lived through a time especially being a senior in high school that year obviously that was my first year here and it was like tackling that with the coronavirus pandemic it's very like sentimental even to me like I still remember that day when you guys came in and cleaned out your lockers and your mm-hmm. school uniforms like I'll never forget that yeah me Cause, neither cause I, that was just like man this is like this is real like we're not gonna come back yeah I remember that we were like talking in a group chat with like some of my friends and we were like this is like I mean they're having us clean out our lockers like it's done like yeah. we're not going back to SCOTUS so we were like, should we be like cheesy and like wear our uniforms? Yeah. And so we were kind of debating it. And at first it kind of started out as like a joke. And then we walked through the halls and like started cleaning out our lockers. Yeah. And we're just like, I don't I had tears in my eyes for yeah. sure. I know a lot of teachers did too. And I don't know. The It was like a small thing that just like made it feel a little bit more normal. Mm-hmm. 
So I, I'm really glad we did that because, yeah, I still remember that. You know, and kind of having your graduation, like it was like, oh, it's going to be May 30th. And then it got pushed again and pushed again. And we had it, you know, but it was just parents and all spread out. It was just a crazy time to think about. But I'm just glad you guys got to have some of those things because some some schools were just like, it's just yeah. over. Like, And we tried really hard here at SCOTUS to try to make it the best situation that we possibly could for you guys because it just wasn't fair for you guys, you know. Yeah, and I mean, I gra- like when we're recording this, I graduated two days ago yeah. s- from from Northwestern, and everyone was like, "What? Like, what do we do? Like, right. no one had ever walked across the stage before. Sure. Very, very few. Yeah. So, I mean, I was kind of like, <laughs> it's not that scary. Like, I promise. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, I had I had one um, a couple months later than it should have been, but yeah. I had somewhat of one. So yeah. So kind of speaking about journalism and your background, how influential was Mrs. Rusher to where you're at now? Obviously, she's a teacher here for journalism and yearbook, um, and you were involved in the Rock Bottom Student Newspaper. Just kind of talk about, I know you kind of always had this dream, but did that really push you like to to make that jump to major in journalism and sports media? Working like for the Rock Bottom and just being in Mrs. Rusher's class every day, that was like my favorite part of scotus um day like from a daily perspective just going in every day we would meet at the center and like discuss what we all had to do for the day and like plan out our issues of the newspaper and kind of check in and then we'd all roll away and go back to our little stations and just like have a quiet place to just work and write and i think that i i learned that i really liked the workflow of it and I think so. I think that just being able to do that every day really helped me be like, okay, I know that I like doing this and this is my favorite part of my day. So I feel a lot more confident that I want to do it every day, all day. Yeah. And Mrs. Rusher, especially, I mean, she was not afraid to like give us her opinions of um, what we were writing or like having suggestions. And I think that really helped me um, to just be able to, to take criticism because you have to like it's never personal in no. journalism but there you have so many editors yep. all of your bosses i mean if you're going into video are always going to have critiques for you and i think that mrs rusher was my first like journalist journalism critique that i had um and so i think that was really helpful she was one of the first ones that i went to when applying to northwestern and she read over and gave me feedback for my admissions essay which i was like so nervous about um because that's a lot of times that's like a make or break deal of whether or not you get in because i mean everyone can have a 4.0 but it's kind of like your personal statement of displaying who you are Mm -hmm. so mrs rusher was a huge help in that i remember i I went in and um just sat down with her and so i think it was kind of a full circle moment of like i know i want to do this i know i want to go to a good journalism school please help me (laughs) (laughs) yeah and she does a great job of giving good critiques And that's something like, and obviously video production class that I teach too, high schoolers need to be critiqued. Mm -hmm. It's something, no matter if you're going into the business or not, and business, I mean journalism, um, you need to have that experience and what that feels like to be critiqued because it's just going to help you down the road. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that was when I was more focused on print uh, just because that was what was available. Um, but I knew I always wanted to go into video and I think it, it feels a lot more personal when you're on camera and you're like self critiquing. Why am I doing that with my hands? Why yeah. does my voice sound like mm-hmm. that? Why can't I look in the camera? Like all yep. these things, like, why did I word it like that? There's so many things that if you think about just like, like a person that's not doing journalism, when you offhandedly like hear your voice on a video and you're mm-hmm. like, gosh, that's what my voice sounds like. Yeah. And it's like, that's what I chose to go into. Yeah. <laughs> like I have to look at myself every day, all day and critique mm-hmm. myself. And so I think that being able to learn that very early on, even in print was something that was really necessary because it's still very hard to watch yourself day in and day it is. out. Yeah. So. I'll always give jur- you know journalists credit and stand up reporters all the time in video production. I, start the year off with having kids watch Mm stand-ups and just say that is one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do it's terrifying and and people don't (laughs) they don't understand they just think that you're just reading the script and it's like it's not it isn't like that it is it is so hard to do that i always want to give credit to people like you for doing that because you do have to deal with that every day 
somebody yeah. picking apart why did she wear that today why did she do her hair like that today yeah i also i also wanted to give you credit because you were the person that taught me how to edit yeah which i never learned when i got to college like it was just kind of an expected skill sure or you kind of had to like learn it by yourself if you if you didn't know before but i learned that in video production yeah. and i like didn't really understand how important how important it was going to be in the future and it's not always like the most glamorous part like it's just sometimes it's tedious oh it's you, a grind it's i mean once you're done with it you let out like the biggest sigh of relief because sure. you're like finally like it just takes so long mm -hmm. and and so many like tedious little steps but you were the first person that taught me how to edit the basics they're very like if i look back at the packages that i made they were not great yeah. <laughs> but it, that was a but I, they were good for somebody who had just opened the software in, <laughs> ja in january and then we submitted to state journalism in march like you know and especially you guys we had such a rush time mm -hmm. with covid and it just kind of got shut down quick i mean we had about eight nine weeks of here's how to turn on a camera set it on the tripod write a script do a voiceover edit like you guys were able to do all that in a short amount of time and you guys did it well so i appreciate that that was a fun class i'll always remember yeah. that class it was it was a lot of a lot of fun memories why does scotus matter to you i think that the first thing that comes to mind i mean i've been talking a lot about the people and a lot of the people that i still stay in touch with today we just have this understanding of like life gets busy life goes on and like we all kind of go in different directions but if you're important to someone like you'll stay in touch and i think that so many of those people in my life are from st bonds from scotus again being in chloe albert's wedding seeing all the people there i mean i just called liza zaruba on the way here to remember which doors are which like i'm like uh, how do i get into scotus <laughs> but um so it, it's just those people that you just, you don't necessarily talk to every day, but you fall back into once you hear their voice and, and call them or you get coffee when you're back. And I think that was really, really cool because, I mean, a lot of people stay in Nebraska that go to SCOTUS, like go to UNL or, or UNK or wherever. And I was kind of scared about going out of state and just having those people that I met here that still like when I come home I because I, I really like like being in the city and being around that that's just kind of like where I've learned that I thrive but when I come home like I come home because of the people so I think that that's one thing that SCOTUS um, definitely gave to me that still I mean is is in my life for sure and also I think my work ethic like I I don't know how I was flying around everywhere like I was in high school I mean thank goodness I've calm down because I don't know I don't know how I could have kept that up but I think that I mean waking up and going to weights in the morning and then going to meetings before school and then going to school all day then going to cross country then going to one act to mock trial after that like being at SCOTUS more than I was at home for most of my high school experience I think that just that grind and being around very like-minded people um I think that was really helpful, especially when I got to college. Well, you kind of just answered my next question about SCOTUS preparing you for college. It yeah. definitely did. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, like, thank goodness I calmed down a little bit because I don't know how I could have maintained that schedule. Uh, but, I mean, still kind of the same. Like, I I was um, the, the sports director for our radio station at Northwestern at the same time that I was cheering. And a lot of people were like, how, like, that's a lot like are you sure you can do that and I'm like again like you don't understand in high school I was <laughs> running around all over the place like juggling like 10 different activities at once like I can be in two pretty big things at once I'm pretty confident They're like, okay and like it was hard but again I mean I'd done it before so it didn't like burn me out or anything sure so what made you land on Northwestern? Obviously, I know their journalism school, number one in the country consistently. Did you have a backup? Kind of talk me through the process of that. Yeah, so I think that very early on in high school, like freshman, sophomore year, when I was thinking just what I want to do, I mean, I knew I wanted to do journalism, so I kind of started looking at schools and then look up, like, oh, what are the best journalism schools? Kind of latch on to one of those. Um, but I didn't visit until the summer before my senior year of high school. 
and that's when I actually decided like this is where I want to go for sure um I just remember getting to campus and of course it was like perfect weather in the summer yeah like Chicago, Chicago summers are the yeah. best yeah. but I didn't realize that it would be super cold and windy 75 percent <laughs> of the time sure. but like I visited in perfect July so yeah. but I mean really I couldn't I remember like stepping on campus and just walking around the lake fill and looking at everything and being like I can't imagine being anywhere else and so that day I remember I was like okay I'm gonna do everything I can I'm gonna apply early decision and so when you apply early decision um there's like a slightly better chance that you get in because you're declaring that like if you apply there then if you get in then you'll for sure go so I kind of set my sights on that very early so that was the goal but of course you have to have a backup yeah um and so I mean I applied to some places in state um and then just kind of all over just random I I don't even know I applied to like uh UNC Chapel Hill USC um those are two I remember, but I, I applied all over the place and filled out so many applications, mm-hmm. but like still was always hoping that Northwestern was it. But yeah, so I, I got an early decision, which meant that I had to withdraw all my applications. So I went through like so much work to apply to all these places and then like never found out if I got in or not. Sure. But I mean, that's a moot point because yeah. I mean, I, I got where I wanted to go, yeah. but I do. I'm like, I wonder if I got into this place or not, or like what it would have been like if I chose this place. But sure, I'm glad that I landed at Northwestern. That's awesome. And parents were all in, kind of once you said like, this is this is where I need to be. Yeah, yeah, they've always been super supportive of me. Um, it it definitely was kind of a tough conversation because sure. I mean it's it's further away from home. Yeah. I mean it, it's a private university, yep. so I had to wait for the financial aid to come back and sure. scholarships to come back and all of that. So. Once we were all in the clear with all of that, then they were, they were really excited. That's awesome. What was the hardest part about adjusting to life in a Chicago suburb after living in Columbus for 18 years? I mean, there was like some adjustment. Again, like any kind of adjustment seemed not that hard because I moved right in the middle of COVID and like we didn't start on campus even in the fall. We had to move in winter 2021. So any sort of like regular college adjustment didn't seem that hard because everything was hard. So, so the fall you were I here. Was, so the fall I was, so we couldn't be on campus. Yeah. So then I ended up finding two girls on Facebook that were freshmen at Northwestern, and we moved into an Airbnb for a month in the fall in Evanston just to like move away kind of still have that like college feel sure. and like we did all of our classes together online yeah. in this airbnb and those are like two of my best friends still wow and i j- just said goodbye to them two days ago so yeah those were those were two of my closest friends that we stayed from freshman year in that airbnb um all the way to senior year yeah that's wild i didn't i didn't even think about that yeah going to college in the fall of 2020 that had to have just been a again very odd that was hard just very hard yeah. and just very like oh like we gotta just a lot of things to work around and logistics and stuff favorite pizza stop in chicago mine is uh the pizzeria uno off ohio bet by the navy pier been there oh man i still remember it's <laughs> just the best so i am lactose intolerant okay but i do enjoy Giordano, giordano's because oh, yeah. they can make it without cheese and it kind of tastes, I don't know, it's its interesting. It doesn't taste like pizza because sure. it's like tomatoes and tomato sauce and like thick crust, but mm-hmm. it's still pretty good. There you so go. when my friends do want to go get pizza, like I'll do that. Or um, Happy Camper in Wrigleyville, I always like. They have dairy-free cheese. Okay. So I'll get pizza there. But yeah, I I can't enjoy most of the very oh, fun Chicago stops. That's all right. <laughs> Speaking of Wrigleyville, are you a Cubs fan? Did you grow up a Cubs fan? Or are you not a Cubs fan? No, I'm not. I'm a Royals fan. Okay, all right. Yep. I, I, you never know in Nebraska because yeah. a lot of times it's Royals, Cardinal. I, I grew up Cardinals fan, and obviously there's Cubs fans here too. But okay, so Royals it is. But yeah, my my fair share of Wrigley games for sure. Yeah, how fun was it to be a D1 cheerleader? And what was the best environment you cheered in? It was surreal. Like, every single time that I cheered, again, like, I have always loved performing. 
and it was just like the most adrenaline that I've ever had and the I mean the places that I got to go were crazy I think that the one that sticks out to me I would say the big house I got a cheer there that was really cool Camp Randall was super cool we got to do the jump around in the end zone oh wow so that was that was one of those moments where you're like I've been a sports fan my entire life and seen this on TV yeah. and now I'm in the end zone doing it uh-huh. it was just it was so cool the two the two best were definitely Nebraska um, first my sophomore year Nebraska and Northwestern played at Memorial Stadium for a night game and okay so yeah. I, I got to come back and cheer for that and it was like a terrible game it was like it was the game oh that yeah was like, Nebraska won by like 50 oh my gosh it was terrible yeah. I mean it was like fine for me like sure. I I was having the time of my life I'm like this is my <laughs> stadium that I grew yeah. up going to like this is one of the coolest moments mm-hmm. ever and like all my cheer friends are like when can we get back on the plane like this game sucks <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like you're ruining my moment yeah um, don't steal this from me yeah but that was that was so cool getting to cheer at Memorial Stadium and then the next year when they played was in ireland and oh. i got a cheer there so oh you did yeah wow yeah that's a cool life memory you'll have forever that's it, awesome yeah it was so much fun and especially because like in ireland they don't have any cheerleaders because i mean they don't have football or like basketball really isn't like too big there sure. so like they don't really have a reason to have cheerleaders and rugby or soccer mm-hmm. and so we would be going around and like just walking around dublin and people would be like asking for our autographs because they'd never seen a cheerleader before. Wow. <laughs> and so it was like, it's kind of like we were celebrities for the week. That's cool. Is that something where like going to, especially like that, do you interact with like, oppo- did you guys interact with the opposing team's cheerleaders? Yeah. Okay. I figured as much, like, especially on a trip like that, you'd almost have to. Yeah. We would do like a lot of cool like sightseeing things with them. Um, but just in general, like when opposing cheerleaders come to your home stadium, you kind of host them oh cool so you meet them yeah so that's always really cool to get to meet them and like see what traditions they do and sure. everything it's kind of a behind the scenes look too yeah that's, that's neat i didn't i did not know that yeah like when we went to wisconsin i mean we were in the end zone because the wisconsin cheerleaders are always in the end zone for the jump around so they invited us to be with them and then i mean wisconsin has a bunch of traditions like they do the fifth quarter mm-hmm. and so it's like this huge dance after the game is over on the field and there's I mean, it was, it lasted a really long time where they were like, you, you guys need to like run off and get on the bus and go home. Um, but yeah, we did the, we did the fifth quarter dance with them. Um, and just, yeah, everywhere we went, I mean, you're just kind of hosted by the, the home cheerleaders. So how many Big Ten football stadiums have you been in? Um, I cheered for two football seasons, technically three, but um 2020 so we weren't allowed in the stadium okay but um yeah those two seasons big 10 i'm not really sure probably on the spot sorry yeah no it's okay i mean i would say most you we don't travel to like the cheer team travels to all of them but not every cheerleader does because it's like a limited travel roster so we rotate okay um but yeah i've been all over i've i've been to duke twice which was really cool Mm -hmm. um I mean, not a great football atmosphere. Yeah. But <laughs> it's really Probably not. pretty sleepy. It's, yeah, it is, especially in September. Yeah. Um, but it was really pretty there. I remember that. But, yeah, I, I don't know. So many so many stadiums, so many arenas, too. Oh, yeah. Um, getting to be at March Madness and um, Big Ten Tournament. So, yeah. That's cool. Uh, w- were you able to start doing play-by-play at Northwestern right away? Or, like, when did you – how how did that work? I know like times were different when I when I was at UNL, broadcasting journalism major. Like you didn't really get to go on camera or do play by play until you were a, a junior. Like what was it like as a freshman sophomore? Were you able to do some of those things? Yeah. So what's really cool about Northwestern and a reason why I was really wanting to go there is because it is pretty small, and so our radio station's pretty small comparative to a lot of different schools and so you do get the opportunity to be on the headset be on camera whatever it is pretty much your freshman fall wow which is yeah which is very not like other schools and I mean for me fall 2020 we weren't on campus so I didn't do my first game until spring 2021 
Um, I remember I did soccer, Northwestern versus Wisconsin men's soccer for my first call, um, just doing color. And then you can start doing play-by-play during baseball season. Okay. So I, I did my first play-by-play my freshman baseball season and then, yeah, did it for all four years. But, I mean, it is – it's not very typical that you get to do that. And also just like the opportunities that we had with our radio station were really cool where we got to travel with the football team and broadcast all of their away games. And then we also got to travel with the women's basketball team because we were their flagship station. So being able to go to every one of those games too was super cool. Do you like play by play or color more? I think, I mean, play by play is just like you're kind of – in control of the game Mm -hmm. like you just you're driving the car yeah you get in the flow of it and like you it's it's very satisfying like when you get a really good call or something and just you get in your rhythm but I think it is fun to be color because I mean when I was like a freshman sophomore I was still very nervous and like everything seemed like so I don't know like such a big deal sure um but now as like an upperclassman whenever you kind of hand it over and like do color it's just kind of like I kind of get to watch the game and just like say what I think like yeah. it's just kind of like you not that you turned your mind off or anything like that but it's a lot less mental work where you're not always like having to be right on top of the action or anything mm-hmm. like that so I think for the most part I really like play-by-play but color is nice to do once in a while because you actually get to like explain what you think and when you have a really good color point and you just like keep going with it you're like wow that would it's it's kind of satisfying to like get to get to say that for sure uh what's the best call you've had who best call i mean i would say my favorite call that i've done would be uh nebraska versus northwestern volleyball um i got to do that on big 10 plus and it was really cool um and i was on color for that the whole time but just i mean i grew up a nebraska volleyball fan that's I mean baseball is like my favorite sport but volleyball is a really close second and especially Nebraska volleyball so that was like a super cool experience to get to do that especially because since it was on Big Ten Plus like I got so many texts afterwards that were like wait that was you yeah. like so many people from SCOTUS I mean yeah. were, were texting me parents and and some of my friends and I remember I, I came back a, a couple months later home and, and visited and and some people came up to me and were like we didn't even know it was you we were like, if we thought the voice sounded familiar, but like we didn't realize it was you until like you came on camera. Yeah. And I was like, that makes me feel so much better because <laughs> like I somewhat sound professional. So thanks for the boost of confidence. Right. But it was really cool to like hear that people back home were listening to me. So that was cool. So I guess what Nat, you graduated two days ago. Mm-hmm. What's next? Right now, I am freelancing for Perfect Game. Um, I book their college baseball and softball shows. So reaching out to SIDs every week and trying to get coaches and players on for interviews. And then I produce and edit those um, to be turned out in about a couple days. Um, And then I'll also fill in to host for that. And so that's like my... um, kind of my day-to-day thing that I do for them and then I also go on trips for them too so especially during the summertime right now it's like there's so many different showcases and tournaments going on uh for especially like prospects like sophomores juniors seniors in high school this is like their main time to get recruited so uh, there's so many different showcases so I'm traveling with them a bunch um doing some sideline stuff um field producing that kind of thing but yeah just Doing that for however long and then still kind of searching for a, a full-time job. Cool. Could you see yourself back in Nebraska maybe or you just don't know yet? I don't really know. Yeah. I, th- I think that with journalism, especially sports journalism, you just kind of have to be open to go wherever. Yep. So um, I think, I mean, if that takes me back to Nebraska, then that's where I am. Um, if it takes me to a random town in Michigan, that's where I am. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, a lot of people ask me, like, where do you want to go? And it's like. Wherever the job takes wherever me. Wherever the, yeah, wherever the job takes me. That's like such a, a journalism it is. answer, yeah. <laughs> which you know. Yeah, so. for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Took me to North Platte, Nebraska, small, second smallest market in the country. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Best decision I ever made in my life. Yep. Though, I mean, just 
being able to do that and meet people and get away from home and just do that. But yeah, in, in the business, you kind of got to go where the job where the job is. And before we are done here, I have five rapid fire questions for you. Okay. Okay. I didn't send you these either. No, I know. So. That's a, I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who was your favorite teacher at SCOTUS? Gosh, um, first one that comes to mind is Mrs. Zanardi. Um, I know she's not here anymore, but I loved Mrs. Zanardi. But also, there are so many. So, if well, gosh, N- not a knock to Mrs. Zanardi either. But now I'm thinking of other people. I can't do rapid fire. <laughs> this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Favorite school lunch. Um, I always, I haven't always been lactose intolerant, so I always liked the quesadillas, especially, um, when you could get them for breakfast, like after junior high volleyball, that was when it was like quesadilla day. It was a good day. For sure. Uh, when wearing the school uniform, sweatshirt or polo? Sweatshirt so you can wear a t-shirt underneath. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it always makes me laugh because first day of school, it's 95 degrees out and 80% of the kids are in sweatshirts, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) they just not wearing the polos, but we're updating the uh, school uniforms this year. I saw that. So hopefully maybe we'll get some polos bought. We'll see. (laughs) Favorite cheer from SCOTUS and can you still recite it? Favorite cheer? Gosh. Um, I would say the first one that comes to mind is like when it's like free throws and you want the opposing team to miss it, it'd be like, M-I-S-S-I-T, miss it for me, for me. M-I-S-S-I-T, miss it for me. I just did the actions, Yeah. but you can't see that. But yeah, that was probably my favorite. Okay. And describe SCOTUS in one word. Community. Okay. I think that's a great way to end this. So thanks, Bria, for coming on, taking the time to talk to Shamrock Nation and all of our CCS families. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. This was super fun. So if you're interested in hearing more Shamrock Green Room episodes, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Make sure to follow us on social media channels, Skoda Central Catholic on Facebook, X, and YouTube, and Columbus Catholic Schools on Instagram. Thanks again for joining us in the Shamrock Green Room.